I'm very excited. Uh, I'm bringing here to our uh, our session Stephen Ugg on this episode, the Nye Garcia podcast, and we're collecting and growing seeds with this man. I, I thought of you right away. I, I wish I could see you in person. That this would have been so much fun in person. But um, every we time almost did. we almost so close. I have to start with something, Stephen. Um, every time I see you. Every time I've seen you, it's been on a con or a comic con. And we're always like either on a lunch break from like a long day or halfway there or really late at night after like a crazy day. And every time I talk to you, every time it's so transparent. And, and that always shocked me because it's such a short time, so busy. Everybody's like all over the place. And then here you come with complete transparency, like every time. And then... And it used to shock me because you know how you're always confronted with so many people and everybody puts all these jackets and masks and, you know, I'm not talking just actors, just like everybody, but you just, you're like this person that comes with everything you've got and you talk about everything you've got. And I feel like you're like that painting behind you that is like all this, all this steam in behind. A ship of fools. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> A ship that's like a ship of fools. That's what it's called. So I, I am a know. great big ship of fools. No, thank you for that. <laughs> but I, I but, but then say, but then I realized I started looking at your work and and your work as an actor. It's an extension of you in a huge way, which is what actors. That's our main goal is to bring that transparency, right? And then and then I start looking at your social media, and here you are again transparent Steven like it's like a freaking x-ray over you all the time so you're not like that at a con or, or working you're like that 24 7 I wanted to ask you how do I feel like that's your superpower how do you feel like that because it's pretty special thank you I mean it <clears throat> I was talking about this the other day it, I recognize I have that but it's also painful like I, I consider it you know, almost no epidermis. Um, you, you, you feel everything. Uh, and, and I feel everything and I feel a lot. And like this morning, I just don't know how to be any other way, to That's be so honest. Nice. I mean, you know, when it comes to, and, but side effects include a lot, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, this morning I woke up and I literally was having a cry in bed and it was, it was weird. I don't know if it, the, the full moon, there was this oh. great thing. Do you know Anthony the Johnsons? He, and I don't know if it's he, she now, but Anthony the Johnsons is now a noni. Oh. So I don't know what he, uh, he, she goes by now because I don't know if he's, he's transgender, but I'm not sure how he, she identifies. Right. But anyways, when he, she was Anthony and the Johnsons, had a wonderful album, Cut the World. Wow, I'll check it out. Was uh, Marina Abramovich one of the most powerful things that I could get goosebumps talking about? It was a play at the Park Armory in New York, which is like this is all I want to do in my life, which I'm not even close to being anywhere near that. That's what I still dream about at the tender age of you know half a century. Um, anyways, the life and death of Marina Abramovich was a show at the Park Armory in New York with Willem Dafoe. Wow, who was like the host in his Wooster group, sort of kabuki theater, white face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and this will come full circle. It'll take a while. But I know. Um, the, uh, the, the full moon thing that on the Anthony and the Johnson album, Cut the World, Anthony at the time, who's now a Noni, spoke about his sister, who's in the mental health profession, yeah. and was discussing the full moon, the effect of the full moon. In, first of all, with obviously the menstrual cycle of women it was talking about. Mm -hmm. And then it was also talking about how we're 70% water. Yes. So the moon would obviously affect us mm -hmm. how, how it does. And in the mental yeah. health field, they, there's a direct correlation with the full moon and when people really wake up. So I don't know if that had something to do with my night. Normally, I disappear for eight hours and I wake up refreshed. But in this particular case, I was eight hours of, of a lot of different dreams. And anyways, I woke up just horribly sad, just missing so many things, like just missing things and crying. And 
so side effects include that. And then next thing I knew I was getting full of rage, like mm. fucking Hulk rage. Mm. Cause then I got pissed off. Why, mm. why, why am the, why is the sadness consuming me? Fuck, fuck the sadness. Mm -hmm. And then I get mad. So, and it's, it's not a, I'm not talking like depression, mental health. We could, that's a whole other topic, but I'm just right. talking about living raw and emotionally um, in my work, because I believe in my work to be as what I am now to be the social media is a bit of a twist. It's more of an art installation, mm -hmm. but it is also like an expression like yours. Mm -hmm. You bring joy and you bring like, you do your, the karaoke uh, thing <laughs> yeah. and, and you, people are like Singing. so happy and so engaged. And that's what you're offering and, and giving, mm -hmm. which is beautiful thing because that's so much better than, like I said, I could post myself in the fetal position crying, mm -hmm. but that I don't, I don't want that as something for the next person to carry on. I'd rather give something hope. Yes. Um, <clears throat> just as in your social media, it doesn't mean you're fucking doing karaoke all day long and <laughs> you've yes. got troubles too, you know? We're but living in the same world with the same full moon. Yeah, totally. So it's, there, there's side effects to it all. I recognize I do that. It's, but yeah, I just believe in nothing else. Um, I, I, sometimes I wish I did. It's like ignorance is bliss, they say. Yeah. Sometimes emotional ignorance would be bliss. I sometimes don't want to feel. I wish I could just not care. Um, I don't know if I'm the greatest empath towards a one-on-one, -on -one, but I think, I am empathetic because I just feel so much. You feel, you feel. That's that that that's where that transparency comes from, and 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 it it translates in everything you do, by the way, and your work. Like you just sit and watch clips of what you do, and then you just meet you for like ten minutes, and you just you you see the same person. And and for an artist, it's um, do you do anything else besides uh, like acting? Like do you are you an, an, an like a painter, a musician? Do you, because that would be translated into that too. That would be so raw. I, I wish, I, I, I wish I had hobbies. <laughs> like I, I mean, well, you have I a wish, beautiful and, and dog it, now. It's so beautiful. I do, I do have a dog, but it's, it's a great example too, of having, having a dog who's, who's, he is a love bug. And, and I've realized he actually brought out, which is interesting. And again, to go with, the truth and the reality. Mm. I didn't get a dog to save me. I didn't get a dog because I did get a dog for companionship. Because mm -hmm. um, there's other ways we sometimes seek companionships that maybe aren't necessarily the best. Um, just a very broad general statement. <laughs> but um, I, I wanted actually the biggest thing with the dog is I wanted uh, responsibility for something other than myself because I've been going through quite a stretch of just really surviving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for me, like yeah. just even today, yes. even as we're about to start this podcast, me saying I was about to bail no. just because honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't for you, but like I was feeling inside, I was getting anxious and anxiety. And I was just like, I'm just in a terrible, I just don't feel good. My head, I went for a quick bike ride to sweat and to get, but, you know, I got the dog to, to sort of try to get something outside of myself, right? To, to be of service timing. to another is the greatest gift. It is. And, and you know, it is. And, and it's, uh, and it's what you do for a living. Like acting is like you're in, you're in a surf for, you're telling a story for everybody else. I mean, you are like the channel that tells that story. And, and have you always wanted to act because you, you have always been this transparent person. Like I'm assuming that as a child, you were like this sponge that would, how do you manage? Well, you're still struggling to manage that, right? Those feelings that you get. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's still a struggle. I mean, I, I think, you know, nature versus nurture. I think we're born a certain way. Having a dog certainly reflects that because yeah. like my dog we went to the beach. I found this isolated place where I could let him off and, nice. um, and, and watching him interact with other dogs, he can play with a hundred pound pit. He can play with a five pound chihuahua wow. and it's the same. That's him because I am no longer like, I'm not the cool as a cucumber guy. I'm the sort of 
like, like very, <laughs> if people are coming, like I'll put them on the leash so that I don't hurt anyone's feelings that he's off the leash or scaring. Like I'm very aware of everything. So I've become much more uptight. So mm. his relaxation is not from dad. Wow. He was born that way. Like I got, I rescued him from the pen. You know, I rescued him. He's just that way. And I pray that I'm not destroying that part of him by being, because I've been get I I've lost my shit with him. I've gotten so angry. <laughs> and I think it's because, and it's terrible, but it's because I have no control over ninety eight percent of my life mm. in in things and circumstances, be it personal, be it with the business. Well, pandemic and too, like everything completely. The stopped. pandemic, yeah. which I haven't really taken in as much as I should. Like I've got my own personal pandemic. <laughs> and my own personal shit that's going on that has really overshadowed COVID. I was like, what COVID? Like this, you know, I'm usually by myself anyway. I'm like, I only work a little bit. I don't work all the time. I'm not like, I'm on these big shows and it's wonderful. Yeah. But like I tell people, I work two to three days a month. Yeah. You know, I get these, these parts that are fun and exciting, but I'm not working a lot. Right. Um, so well, right I now, these, nobody... Have we, before, before we, we, we have to address, and I, I apologize for interrupting. I don't know if we have addressed as we're recording or before the fact what? that you look so beautiful <laughs> and gorgeous and like you've stepped off a red carpet and look at my finger. I look like I've just come in from your backyard fixing the fence. What did he do? My toe. Oh. I cut my toe open. I split my toe. And, and this is actually, uh, it's hockey tape. But hockey tape works the best for if you ever slice yourself, Band-Aids don't stick on. So wrap oh. it in tissue or a Band-Aid first. And then you put hockey tape. And it's not hockey tape. It's sports tape. But sports, that's yeah. what they do for hockey sticks. Uh, the big jock that I am. <laughs> and, and you just wrap it and it's six but anyways i uh this and my toe were actually because i had a bit of a hissy fit and i kicked something <laughs> and it was a piece of wood and it split my toe no and, and then my i normally punch things when i'm angry just so i because i don't hurt others i just hurt myself like i just punch a wall or something but i think i hit something and i'm not left-handed so i i within a hissy fit i split my toe open <laughs> And my finger. And your middle finger. <laughs> so, I mean, that, yeah. that's like in a completely different place. I mean, like toe, finger, middle finger. And I don't even remember how I did this one. I was in such, I was probably in my Hulk mode of just this raging. It's how I do get it out of my system. It's not healthy. I don't recommend it to the kids at home. <laughs> and it's something I've worked on from therapist to mindfulness to yoga to everything. But... I lose my shit a lot, and when I lose it, I get it out of my system. Mm -hmm. But it's usually not in the, the healthiest. It's not like ah. <laughs> you no, get a you like, you you got some toe broken, some fingers. Something's gonna fucking break. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, something's gonna fucking break. <laughs> something um, is. So, break. anyways, what that was, I wanted to explain that the reason is because I just was cycling, and 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 I've been doing press all day. So there's a, a, a I don't know. I guess I felt very insecure with. No, you, you looking look wonderful, and me looking like I've just mowed the back of lawn or something. No, you look fantastic. Come on, don't be silly. But I wanted to ask. I'm you. sorry. Work, work, work for us. You were saying that you are concerned about the creative uh, journey while we're on set because you're right. When we're on set and there is something that we can, the blocking part, right? Like when we can make something better, right away we call the writer or the director. Or, or somebody, and, and normally, usually, it's, a, it's in a group. Actors creating with cameras, and how can we make this work? And you're right. All of a sudden, I was like, wait, we need to start a podcast right now. <laughs> this is something we need to talk about. How are we going to do that? Uh, and knowing you, I think you will be like, no, wait, this doesn't make sense. We need to bring the director. We need to, you will bring people in 
and 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 also the fact that we think that we forget how to act. That's my concern. Even like you know, I'm like, <laughs> I did do an audition for a film. It was the first audition that I was. It was the first project I have to say in a long time that I really really wanted, and of course it went out as an offer to, you know, X marks the name. Um, but it was like, and that I memorized quickly and actually did a, the, an audition, a self tape where I wasn't using, you know, cue cards or cheating because yeah. it was well written and it was a beautiful project. But so yeah, just memorizing, remembering lines, uh, all of that is like, it's a muscle. And when you don't yes. use it, it's uh, like, it gets, it gets frightening. And, and the creative process of it, like, I, you know, I know obviously with fear, and obviously knowing a lot of people on fear um, and, and with like the walking dead, like I never with, with Gimple on the walking dead, I never consulted a lot of people, even Snowpiercer, like with Graham. You were. I just, thank you. I don't like, I'm not a big consulter. I don't like, I don't call the, 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 sh the showrunner or the writers, unless there's something I completely don't understand. Oh. I like to make, myself understand it and i like to just i know some actors like that communication with like you're saying the director and all of that i really like i i'm i'm fine to just go for it mm -hmm. um and trust that they will be there to do their jobs as in a director like i i always say i remember like jeffrey and i um jeffrey dean morgan and it was a scene with the the bat this is just part of the creative process and if I going on too long, just say shut up. No, no, I um, love this because we never get to talk. Every time we talk, it's been you know around a lot of people. I, I love hearing this. Please. <laughs> and that's the other thing which you did mention. Like, even your teacup is pretty. <laughs> fuck, fuck this. I got like a flash. <laughs> Oh, you're so Next fun. time, give me the heads up. Say you're doing press all day, and then I'd wear a shirt and then not a hat. No, because then you would really cancel on me. Then you would be like, be like no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so the like the the creative process of of like I remember the the scene around the the big table when there was like, it was Xander and it was the whole group of us, and uh, I, Negan had told me to go on my knees. Uh -huh. uh, told you know, the character Simon to go on my knees. And so usually, of course, that is not good. And he's got his bat. Um, and so, again, this is when we're block, you know, we're blocking it out and you do the read through yes. and you're you just first, you, you know, they're always so great at letting the actors kind of do what they would like to try. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You're, you're always allowed to try. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> just to make the actors feel good. We'll give this a try. Eh. <laughs> um, so. I decided that I would turn when I kneeled. So, you know, you kneel and there's, there's Jeffrey uh -huh. behind you with Lucio. So as we're, we're blocking it, I, I kneeled and I just faced him. Nice. Like on my knees. And I was just like, that was sort of the, my choice of, okay. Then smash my head in, but right. you're going to look at me. Right. You beat these people's head, you do all your killings and you kill people behind whatever. Just look me in my eye and smash my skull and go for it. You know, let's see right. who's a man. So point being, the creative process, of course, I think, was it Greg? That's a really good That's choice because you're like his right hand man. Like you were his, his guy. I mean, and I just wanted it to be like, yeah, this. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just that was then really fucking amazing. man up and do it. Right. But of course they came over and they said, no, Oh, you're not going to face. No, turn around. Turn oh. around. So the point being with the creative process is you, you try stuff and then you rely on the uh, director because they also directors and showrunners, they, they, they know obviously yeah. much more of the whole scope. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're going to be there to sort of guide you ideally in what would work or what wouldn't. So with this new scenario of COVID, you're going back before for, um, for me on set. Um, although the cast like of Snowpiercer, I was saying is finishing right now. And mm -hmm. the comments I get are, it's weird. 
<laughs> Everybody's saying that it's weird. Everybody's saying it's weird. Well, yeah. you're, and so this to me is the more because creatively, um, I, I, I like to engage with people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need to, I don't need to fuck around. Well, I like to fuck around on set, but that's more about just trying to keep it loose. Right, right, right. As opposed right, right. to trying to get someone Be off their game. It's not coming from a place of ego. It's just coming from a place of. Yeah. Well, you're transparent. You have to breathe. You have to breathe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's and then you're also more available to someone. Of course, 100%. You're just like, yeah. I'm open. Your present. Whatever is coming. And you're, which is like, it's funny because I know Alexander Berkeley with The Walking Dead, like we connected because we both found ourselves, we're the same dancer. Oh. We, when we got on set, we both realized, because some people, as you know, aren't. Like there's, there's people that might, you know, Time. Yeah. So the 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 uh, headphones what? they, they don't want to engage. Yeah. 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 Um, which is fine. Everyone gets to a different place. But when you're actually, if it's you and I in a scene together, you do want to engage. You do want to be. Oh well, yeah. You're telling stories. Looking and listening and and mm -hmm. responding and 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 that's why film and doing 600 takes. I don't care because every take should be different. Mm -hmm. yeah, every totally. time you're you're trying to get somewhere different but so now with the creatively with the COVID it'll be interesting because you just I, you you can't right we're not going to be interacting as much no. but then the actors on set will be but then the crew is even it my concern and this is hopefully temporary is which like Andrew with The mm -hmm. Walking Dead was always such a team uh, just to, you know, keep it in The Walking Dead, fear of The Walking Dead universe. Um, such a great leader because everyone was equal. Yeah. The zombies, extras, day players, everyone. No cast system. <laughs> That's nice. Which is like I found in New York growing, uh, you know, starting and working in New York for 25 years. Especially on some shows, there's a cast system. There's the star, there's the day player, there's the guest star somewhere in between, and there's the extras, and then there's the crew. That division is no good. It's a team sport. Should be a team player. Everyone is just as important as yes. the next person. I'm curious with COVID, with the literal separation, yeah. is that going to translate to more of that? situation where we're separated i don't i don't know maybe just i hope not i hope not because uh there's nothing yeah I, I i really hope not and i'm with you i really hope this is temporary so it doesn't translate into like we are more or, or less or whatever one of the most beautiful thing about go, showing up on set is that we're in this together we work the same amount of hours we want to finish early for everybody all of us to go home <laughs> I mean, we just really wanted to, it, it's hard. I know lunchtime, it's going to be separate. We're not going to be able to have lunch together anymore. I know uh, well, makeup. Some when, people never did anyways. There's people that would always just grab it and go back to the trailer. Or, but yeah. that's again, because if you have big, if you have a lot of work to do, yeah. you need to focus. Yeah, yeah, but there yeah. was times like I know with Snowpiercer, we would, well, even with The Walking Dead, like that's some of your, I find it, I'd say majority. If not, you know, not all, I'd say the majority of when people say, what are your favorite moments or what your favorite moments to film on a show or whatever you're doing. I'll tell you my favorite moment, eating lunch with someone or. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's. It's fun. Time, right? It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they make your day better. And then after lunch, they look at you. They're like, hey, they kind of bring back like that lunch that you had. It's really cool. Every time you finish, like, uh, you know, the little clips that I've seen of you working, uh, they're very intense. Like, do you feel like you let go of that energy, that rage, that how do you put that rage into the arts? Do you do that? Because I feel like if you do, uh, do you? I'm not. I mean, I'm not a method actor or like. Meisner or, or you know I mean obviously it's it's a combination of a lot of different techniques um I think I think all it is is that energy or that rawness or if we're to sort of stay on point with this 
uh, transparency that you say that I have. I think all it is is really what I what I what it gives me is a sort of this myopic focus. Right. So if it if it if it is being interpreted or seen as as intensity it's simply through this transparency and emotional rawness that i'm really concerned and focused on giving you. right yeah so and if i'm not getting something or depending what the character in the situation is you know i'm going to i'm going to fucking stay locked phasers on stun until right. this issue is resolved. It's funny because Garrett and mm-hmm. Fear. Yeah. Um, you know, Garrett and I met in acting class in New York. What? 25 years ago. I didn't oh, know yeah. that. What? Yeah. Oh this acting gosh. class was crazy. And Michelle. I mean, I know Michelle. Yeah. Um, and so we had the same, this acting coach, Alan Savage who on the Upper East Side of New York taught out of his one bedroom apartment. It was like, wow. Yeah, we were like, where's the bed? <laughs> but anyways, that aside, the point being is one of the things that he taught. So, hi, baby. Hello. Hi. Uh, you need to say you hi. Come up to you and say hi? Yeah, come he here. talked about come you. Come <laughs> come oh my gosh, you're hot. He's just like, it's, it's 100 degrees here. We've got a heat wave here in LA. Oh boy. Um, so the, you know, one of the things he said is, um, that's stuck to this day is changing the other person, right? It's it's about changing the other person. And you mix that and that was the acting coach changing the other person with my sort of philosophy of, it's not totally this, but a simplistic version is from a Guns N' Roses song, <laughs> that's how I get my acting, <laughs> is the Guns N' Roses song of uh, Step in the Ring, Motherfucker, and I'll Kick Your Sorry Little Ass. Forget oh, what wow. song it is. Step in the Ring, Motherfucker, and I'll Kick Your Sorry Little Ass. I think it was the Use Your Illusion album. Point being, it's, 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 it's competitive, and it's a competition to change that other person and to affect the other person so that the emotional rawness with the myopic focus to change someone mm. equals an intensity. Well, how do you discover acting though? Cause I feel like you're the perfect actor. Cause that, cause acting people don't realize, but people think acting is like, Oh, so easy. But acting takes a lot of energy. I, I, I think takes a lot of energy out of you. It really, not just because we work in crazy environment, but energy, like emotional energy, you need to have like an emotional so much in you to create first to create then to to live it and then to give it and and then to stay there until you accomplish your job and and that and then to watch it is not even it's hard sometimes because you you gave so much in that moment that it's hard to receive too and they they took your worst take (laughs) well putting that away yeah 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 but uh, how do you discover acting? Like, I mean, I think actually, I find the the biggest energy drain is is the business, like survive, like s- s- navigating and surviving the world of the business. Like, yeah, um, it's the job that you I'm are most, working, most unemployed. You know, it's it's the job that you you you're always unemployed. Like you get a job, you work for like a month, or you get a serious. You work if you're lucky, you get a few years out of it. But then you're unemployed, and then that is not a normal thing for a human. Like we are not used to not knowing what to do next. We we are uh, yeah we're made to be in a cave and go the next the next day and work on the land. But you know what to do next. You know you have a plan. Actors, we are always on this floating place, and and that is the hardest thing. It was the hardest thing for me to to have with no schedule, zero schedule. And then when you have a schedule, you can't break it too. Like you go from zero schedule to like once you get a job, is like full on. You have to be sharp. You have to be ready. You have to be all those things memorize your lines and all that it's 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 work and it's not you know i think you know it is even like you know it's not digging ditches um 
it's but you know people and again it's it is work i mean it it does take a lot of work it takes a lot of work to survive it to do it um to continue doing it um yeah. some of us it's all we know how to do so you become if you've been in the circus your whole life it kind of gets tough to to do anything else uh i because i mean those those like i remember you know with snowpiercer even working two to three days a month or you know whatever and just three if i work two days in a row for better or for worse i'm a different person i just I, i'm just different so and that's not to say everything in my life is based on being on set and acting it, yeah. it, it's not but i am you know when you asked about do i do i do other things i, I wish i did it would probably be much healthier <laughs> i tried banjo and then i kind of put it away i read all the time i've got tons of books that i read um yeah, but you know, I don't have, I'm not like a lot of people that do, I write. I mean, my Instagram has become sort of my art installation for my writing, not necessarily in the moment, but things that I have, uh, it's sort of in a, uh, I've been reading your stuff. It's, it's, you really have a skill. That's why I thought you were a writer too. I thought for a fact, you must have like scripts, or, you know, cause you, again, you have so much in you. Maybe and I have you no should put interest it in, in there. writing a script or a book. I just don't. It's like, and right now, I mean, a big part of my life right now is is just I, there's a piece missing I, that I'm still coming to terms with. There's a piece missing of, of the puzzle of my life mm -hmm. that it's like I feel organically my DNA has changed. Mm -hmm. I don't have the same. Well, I still have passion, and this is what reengages me with. Oh yeah, no, I still. But I just feel my life uh, is just so different right now. And I, I struggle with the, the existence of it, mm -hmm. not in a suicidal end my life sense, but just in like, what the fuck is the purpose of all this? <laughs> is it just to be happy? Is it just to share? Is mm -hmm. it stuck? I mean, I do realize that with, you know, like speaking with you and stuff is that inevitably, I always feel better after engaging with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. without a doubt. It's just sometimes getting to engage is difficult. Like, because, mm -hmm. you know, I'll have to call someone. I'll just be, I'll put it off for a couple of days until I feel like talking. Yeah, I get it. Um, so it's, it, it, it's, it's really tough. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I just don't, like, I don't have, I'm looking at my books here. I'm like, I admire so many of these authors and writers and, no, I'm, I have some street artists that want to collaborate on some art. Um, I just have the piece missing is almost like a drive. The drive, like when you're young, the hunger. But about talking about that piece missing, I, I really haven't. Like, do you have do you have things that you? I don't know. You 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 just you see you're a much more productive human being, uh, much more important to the planet than I. Don't be silly. But are there, are I there think things what you do is that, pretty special. Well, I don't know what I do. I write fucking blurbs on Instagram and I. No, uh, no. I think. I pick up uh, my dog shit. <laughs> no, you know what you, what really touched me of the stuff that you did is what you share with your dad. And he, those videos that you put with your dad, um, your dad trying to recognize you and, and you walking him through it and. It reminds me every time I meet you in the middle of like this crazy chaotic conventions and place and there you come present and you're present right there too. And I, I wanted to tell you that because I, again, we haven't had a chance to talk and every time we see each other, I don't want to tell you, hey, Steven, I really like what you do with your dad. It's like, we just try to catch up, right? And and I, I find you so brave in that way and uh, it's, it, it must be very strange to see the man that I've raised you now today. You are, you're his guardian. You're like, uh, the man that is guiding the men that raised you. I, 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 I every time I it's see that, very... it, it, it really gives, it, it, I look at it for a really long time. And sometimes you don't realize what you do. Sometimes we don't realize what we do, but I really look at it for a long time because it's, and I go back to the last post that you put about w with your experience with your dad. And it's, it's, um, and I read what you do. It's really powerful. 
Well, thank you. Thank you yeah. for saying that. I, I don't, I sometimes question, I guess, what I do. And I do realize that it has an impact and an influence. And I think it, uh, it the ebb and flow of maybe my emotional state or how I'm feeling is reflective of how my worth that I feel. But I do recognize and understand that there is something being said. And I, and I don't take it like our whole social media and our Instagram. I just use Instagram to do anything else. Um, Jan Arden, who is a Canadian singer songwriter who I admire and love. And she wrote a, a, a cookbook with her mother when her Ooh. mother was going through Alzheimer's. Wow. And her mother passed away. She's from Calgary, same hometown nice. in Alberta. And she's a uh, she's probably more recognized in Canada as a Canadian um, singer songwriter. She has her own show on CTV, the Jan Show, uh, which I haven't been on yet. And she said I was going to be on. Damn her! Story of my life, empty promises. <laughs> um, but she's she's a wonderful. She's very inspiring. And she in I think it was even in her book, which is an incredible book. It's a great cookbook memoir. Uh, mm, and Jan has been through. It up. A lot. Jan Arden. Love her to bits. Um, very honest, open, emotionally available nice. human being. Very inspired by her. And she said years ago in this book about the, the sort of responsibility you have if you're on social media, or not the responsibility, the choices you have. Mm -hmm. So, and I think I wrote about this on a post too. If you have the choice to filter your face, you know, to make yourself look different, Hey, no judgment. If that's what you want to present to the world is a is a false front, then that that's that's your choice. Uh, if you choose to post something negative, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. But what a wonderful choice to to post something with hope or that we're not alone to to make someone feel less alone in the world or to feel some hope. Right. Even if you yourself don't always feel it, because I always don't. Things I write and things I put out there aren't necessarily coming from a place of because my life is fucking great and I'm yeah, living no, the life no. of Riley and everything is great. <laughs> Just like what I said with you, your presentation with the karaoke and sharing with these people and creating such love and positive energy is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you are choosing yes. to do that. Yeah. You're not embodying that 24 no. 7 no of course not you know yeah so it's it's choices it's just like we choose i mean god damn, you know i read the the stoics i read philosophy i read you know like <laughs> another fear actually austin my girl austin emilio i love austin he just, <laughs> he just I love said, austin last week or whenever we were talking um, it was after, you know, when I was going to come and all of that mess, but he, he was, uh, I was talking about some book I was reading and he's like, let me guess another book on death. What? Cause like, <laughs> yeah, because well, I read a lot of books of like, be it from the Stoics or, um, you know, a lot of philosophers, I read this great book about, they were, they were breaking down different philosophies and a, a lot of books are, they, they're not books on death. They're actually books on living. But they just are about that. Um, and what my point with all that was what? Oh, it was about the choices we make. So the choices, you know, you choose to be happy or you choose like, and, you know, I listen, I'd love to choose to be happy all the time. It just doesn't work that way for me. I just mm -hmm. feel like shit. Obviously, I can't be in that stage for 24 hours, but it's a way to cope through the hard times. Uh, because like you said, people have choices. People have choices to either get angry, get upset and, and just feed onto that. Or you can punch a wall and break your finger and get it out. Uh, you know, you can, <laughs> the middle finger, <laughs> but you know, you have a choice to get it out, but, but you, we still have to feel it. We can't just put a filter and be like, Hey, it's not there when it is. We, we, it, it's not a, it's not a mystery. It, it's not a secret that we're living very, very strange times. Uh, but, uh, but the point is, but did you really? No, no but actually. Oh, Do you join the circus? Oh, 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 oh I, I, I will. 
a quick story in Paris, when I lived in Paris, the uh, one of the founders of Cirque du Soleil, which obviously we now all know, ah. but this was back in the day when Cirque du Soleil was just a small, wow. it was in Quebec when I, I was living, I live, I, I moved from Montreal to Paris, but the, uh, the, I don't know if it was the owner, the, the Pierre, but it was someone that basically at that time said, would you like to be a porter in this uh, Cirque du Soleil show? The porters are the, like, because back in the day in Paris, I was a big, muscular, like... Very big guy. I was, I was just... <laughs> and I had French braids. I had really? long hair with French braids. And I was wearing, like, a lumberjack jacket. And I was just fucking angry and just wanted to kill. And you were the crazy... Paris, <laughs> the crazy yeah, Canadian in pink Paris. Paris, yeah. Learning French. Uh, I thought that'd be a good place to learn French. But, so, point being, they, they asked, would you like to be, you know, you lift the, the, the girls up and... I said, ah, no, that's fine. But my God, can you imagine wow. had I said yes? Wow. I would have been literally in the circus. You would have been in the circus. What, what, were you an actor by, back then? Were you an actor? I mean, I, I, I acted, which I never really, I think, answered your question. Welcome to my world of trying to get a <laughs> direct response. Fucking <laughs> living hell. <laughs> Uh, but I was telling you that, you know, the choices that we make, the choices that we make, uh, I, I choose to, to sing. I don't, I'm not a singer. Actually, I'm terrified of singing. I, I don't have a good voice. I put like a lot of volume in my computer. So the karaoke is, is for real. You know, it's more like them singing than me singing. But what brings out of me is like, you know, it's just, you, you got to sing things out uh, and you make a choice. I, I told everybody, let's do this three times a week for an hour. And, and that's kind of like what got me through the pandemic. Like it's three times a week I wake up. Yeah, I will have a routine. I'll get up and I'm like, okay, it's nine o'clock. I have to have my either coffee or toast or whatever. I have my list of songs this week and I'm like, just it's Spanish or English. I can switch. Uh, and people showed up and, and I think it's just kind of scheduling happiness, even when you don't feel like it. Even when you don't really feel like singing or, or people think like happiness is something that you, you feel you, you don't. And, and I think it's an overrated, uh, people haven't really, they all want to just find this happiness that doesn't exist. It just doesn't. I, I lived in a place where I remember tourists will come from other countries and they will be like, oh my God, everybody's so happy. And, and what you don't realize is you choose you choose how to deal with things and, and you have choices. Like you said, you can either get upset, you can get angry or you can get negative. You can be uh, vicious. You can be like disrespectful. You know, you can do, you have the choice to put a filter on it. Like your friend said, like put a filter on it and be like, oh, let's just be pretty. Or you just can be yourself and say, you know what? This is me angry. This is me happy. This is me singing. This is me not knowing what's happening. Or, or this is just me living. And, and I think this year brought the worst and the best in us when it comes to dealing with, you know, not knowing. And, and where do you schedule happiness? Because it's obvious that we're not living the happiest times. <laughs> not even when you want to, you know? I believe it's uh, like I was saying with dogs, it's, it's disposition. It's how you're born. Um, some people, I think, just have an innate ability to be happy, um, regardless of their struggles or their troubles. I truly admire that. Like, um, I just know, like my my lean my lean to or my you know what I what is is darkness is depression is mm -hmm. just not a state of utter joy. Um, it's it's work. I mean, I've I've discovered a lot of, um, and I won't use the example because it actually changed recently for, for their situation, um, not drastically, but and and this is not to uh, equate, you know, just because people get very worked up nowadays when you say things, but <laughs> the, the um, and this is to 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 talk about happiness being a journey and something you have to work on is the, to me, it's an analogy that this is why I said no one getting, please, no one get offended, but it's the analogy of, of an alcoholic 
who, like 27 years sober, every morning wakes up, and the first thing they say to themselves is, I'm not going to have a drink. Right. And I heard this story, and, and certainly we all have plenty of friends that have been in the program, through the program, part of the program, are the program, mm -hmm. be the program, <laughs> to each his own. The point being, there's that drink that after 27 years of being sober, the first thought in their mind is, I'm not going to have a drink today. So that takes work. That yes. takes fucking work and work. courage. My tumbler, my glass, is depression, darkness. Mm -hmm. Call it whatever you will. It's not a great place, not a happy place. So this drink here of darkness and depression, what do I have to do? to not take that. I have my steps and during this time period have become even more like very structured. And again, I understand I'm just, it's just me. I got a dog now. Like I don't have a lot of responsibilities to anyone, not my choosing. I would like, like it's not because I'm a big selfish asshole. Like I, I don't <laughs> mind helping. Yeah. It's just, this is my life. So I'm trying to deal the best I can with what I have. And so those steps are, you know, I got to do this. I have to, usually it's structure. like, wake yeah. up. Structure. It's, you know, do, do some yoga, do whatever mindfulness or, you know, I'm not really meditating these days, but this, this you know, go for a bike ride, or whatever it is. It's usually, it's four things that I'll use this hand so it doesn't look like I just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's four things that it might not necessarily lead to happiness, but it is on the road to such. Um, and that's what everyone just needs to do, right? And that's what everyone has to understand is that it is a journey to get somewhere. Some people are innately happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And fucking God bless. Them. I absolutely love that. Like when you see people that smile walking down the street. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yes. Well, like junior high, people would say to me, what's wrong? I'd be like, nothing. <laughs> well, what's wrong? <laughs> nothing. Well, you, you don't look happy or whatever it was. And I was like, well, that's just my faith. Resting <laughs> faith. <laughs> that's, yeah, look, that's why I get these characters. I'm, a, I'm just a jackass and I get all the creepy dark guys because this is my face. It's not because I, you know, so it's a, we we have our journeys. We have our things that we need to do. We are not all that we necessarily. We're not all the time what we present. Present. But you want to present something ideally positive and and, and hopeful and and you know pass on a nice warm loving torch as opposed to a crown of thorns to put on. You know, is you your work your the stuff that you put on and every time we talked, it, it's been always, like I said, raw. I started the whole thing with being so transparent when I, cause when I said transparent, it's like, you don't know, this is what you get. You're going to get Steven. You're going to get Steven, like whatever it is in his mind. It, it, this is, that, that's what this podcast is like this. These are the seeds. Like, this is what you get. Like you, it's work to be happy. It's work to even get to the journey of like being content or, or, or anything. And, and that's, th that is, what have you learned from being in that state? What have you gotten good at from being, from that struggle? Like, is there something that has worked? Because I feel like everybody to some extent have those dark days. What has worked for you? apart from the structure and, and the, the things that you stay away from that glass? That's, I mean, that's, that's what's worked the best, is finding that, those things. The structure, finding right? The structure, the steps, the, like, even I've added, I get up and, and my morning coffee, I will read mm. for 20 Um. Even though when you don't feel a, like it, even when you don't yeah. feel like it, right? Like I would write, okay, let me get out, get, get, take the dog for a walk right away. Or let me, yeah, I don't need to do this today because I feel good or whatever it is. No, I, I realized I need to, because I used to, I mean, meditation used to be a big thing for me for two years. Oh. And that, 
meditation saved my life. Like it was, there were yeah. some dark days <laughs> and I, being, I would wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety and meditate, put on like a headspace. Yeah. Yeah. Calm down the, the headspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then interesting mindfulness meditation started to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> it was working a little bit. <laughs> I was getting it. Um, but this is after two years. So I, honestly, what, what it is, is, is finding the things. So that's what, because, you know, just before we hopped on this, I was like, you know, I kind of got hammered with something else that I just felt, I don't, I don't know how to deal with this. But you know, just don't know how to when you, when you talk to your, to your dad, there's a side of you that comes out that has nothing to do with this man that you're talking about right now. Like there's a side of you that is very gentle, that is in control, that is caring, that is so kind, and that is like love all over. It's so. It, I know I'm a good person. I know you, I'm good, like, uh, yeah, like like you. It's it's hard for you to admit that sometimes. Look at you. You're like talking that your dark side, but I, the part that really struck me is like this mirror of yourself that is just gentle. It's it's kind. Oh, no. It's well, it's all part of it. Like, it's all again, part of it. My dad now is, you know, dad 2.0, right? I mean, he's not what he was and we all face, uh, you know, we all die. Yeah. Um and and so now it's just I can't be there. I wish I could go visit, but you know, going up to Canada means a 14-day quarantine and it's just so what I can do because it honestly, to him, I, because even going in person now, the, the hugging, it's just all different. It's different, so yeah. You just do what you can do. And, and, and they're gracious enough and wonderful enough. And the staff where my father is, it's great that you can FaceTime. And like yesterday, I did it from the, the, the beach, this place I found. Uh... And, and on a walk, I said, Dad, we're going for a walk on the beach. And so we'd sort of walk. And there was a dolphin. <laughs> It was oh fucking my crazy. God. Yeah. I was like, Dad, don't. They just got this new program where you could pop balloons. Like it was a, it's a, it's an interactive. Interaction. Yeah. I heard thing. of those. And man, he just wanted to pop balloons. So I was like, Dad, you're, you're the popping balloon master, man. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, he's, he's certainly even, even in the past three months. And it's interesting talking to the wonderful, wonderful, talk about our healthcare workers and, and the people that, you know, we on the front lines or, or what everyone says, my God, these people. And every time I call and this is, you know, this is what I've learned. And this is to, to answer your question to try to, is, you know, to really be grateful and to pass that along to someone. Like I call them and they FaceTime me and I say, hey, how's everyone doing? And thank you. Yes. Thank you for all your work. Side example, went socially distant my first, not my first, I've done it before, but went out uh, for, it was lunch, I think, or was it an early dinner, five o'clock, old man, old man. <laughs> um, and we were, you know, the tables are all six feet apart. So I felt comfortable because I get very, I'm very freaky now with it all. So we had a uh, dinner, friend and I, six foot apart and the waiter came up and his name was Johnny because I immediately you know what's your name Johnny yeah said, Johnny all right man what are you doing you good <laughs> and he's like yeah man. you know <laughs> yeah, man. okay all right you know we'll get this and this and so the night went on and and I was like uh, there was some person over there I noticed being a bit of an asshole and I said man he just seems like an asshole are you cool and he's like yeah. oh it's <laughs> Part of the business. And anyway, engaging with him. what happens after all of it is he's like, thank you for this was one of the best nights I've had in weeks. Wow. And I was like, what fucking talking about. And this wasn't because uh, he knew me. He had no oh. idea who I was. Yeah. Well. You know, star has gone. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, some dude being nice. And, uh, 
And the point being was like, I just, I really appreciated him and all of his work. And then he in turn was so appreciative. Like just, yeah, you made my night. And I was like, just being polite. So that's what you can do is you can be kind. You can not be a piece of shit. That's what I've learned. Even if you're feeling bad, like, you know, this and my toe is is my (laughs) own it out, but it's not treating someone that way. Treat someone nice. Yeah. We, the world, the world needs it. The world needs, especially now, right now we need, we need friends, we need companionship, we need brotherhood, we need sisterhood, we need one world together. We really need to connect. We, we, we try to, this podcast was born because of that, because of my necessity to connect and, and the fans were like the fans, the people, the community that I built, uh, I don't consider them fans. They're like friends. They're like, you need, we, we need, we want to hear more of it. And then, and honestly, I thought of you, I thought, I thought, huh? I like that, that it's a community. It's a, it's not fans. It's like, I can't think of them as fans. I know their names. I know what they look like. I've been seeing they're singing with them for like six months. They can't be fans. They, they, we have to be with friends. And, and, and they were like, what don't you, what don't you do? We want to hear more of this. And I'm like, there's so much I can talk. I want to bring people in. And then I thought of you, I thought of like a cup, a few cup. I thought of Garrett. I already reached out and, and it's like, I want to have the conversations that we could never have, you know, the, the conversations that we could never have because you, the, the little times that we talked and I admired your transparency, but I could never have, you know, we're like on a schedule all the time. I mean, I've seen you in Atlanta. I've seen you in San Diego. I've seen you in so many places. I, I forgot, like so many states. Uh, and we could never have like this talk and and really get to know you more. I've been, I, I, I've been getting to know you, but through different um, source, you know, like, and, and it's always you. And, and, and that's why I was just like, so excited to talk to you and be like, what is the one thing that Steven has learned all this throughout your entire life? And, and, you know, being good to others could not be like a better answer, whatever. I don't care how long you took to, to answer this question, <laughs> but being good to others, be, be, it go, always goes full circle, but being good to others and, and it just never, it never gets old. And, and now that everybody's alone, I'm sure that waiter really appreciated like the best night in the entire week. That's, you know how many people that guy serves? That's a lot. That's you a lot. You know what's crazy? Went back there uh, with their friend a couple days ago and texted me saying, Johnny says hi. No way. <laughs> and entire meal comped. What? Yeah. Oh, that is so nice. I guess it had resonated to such a point. I was like, why the fuck didn't it comp my meal? <laughs> <laughs> You have to go back, but, but it goes be, but being nice goes a long way, goes a long way. That's probably a week or I think it was a week ago we went. So a week or so, however long that was, A, he remembered. Yeah. It wasn't me, but my friend there and they were like, oh my God. And they said, how's, you know, how's Steven? Wow. And so that's why I got to like, Johnny says hi. And I was like, oh, so cool. Sweet. And. The, their meal was comped just, I think, because it resonated with him. And that's just simply being kind um, and, and maybe real. And I guess that's, you can just be real. It doesn't, I'm not saying it works because I, you know, it, it doesn't, you just, yeah, it's just perseverance, be kind, be real. Because oh, I don't even understand it. What, what's next for you? what's next for you? Are you going to, are you going to try different things to keep carrying on? Uh, I know you're working on the show, but when I say what's next for you, mean it doesn't mean like what's next on your work wise. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to tell you something in terms of like the acting kind of thing. Actors, there's a beautiful quote that says, uh, I get paid for waiting. The acting is free. I think it was Meryl Streep. Uh, actors, we get paid really for waiting. 
because they're acting in our, in terms of action, in terms of like effort, in terms of that mindset focus, it's free. Like it's a joy. It, it, getting paid for that, it's, it's, it's crazy. But the waiting, this waiting part that you are, that we get to like this floating, that's what, that's why, that's, that's why you get paid for the waiting. Cause that's the hardest part. Even on set, like we're, we're on set. And we're hanging out. Yeah. For Long hours. 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 <laughs> and then you for 10 minutes and then there's switching setup and you're back waiting for hours. And it's, yeah. yeah. And what's incredible is just those little moments, like an hour of working after 12 hours of waiting. That's, you know, I, I've made an alcohol analogy. Now I'll make a shooting up analogy. <laughs> but that's, you know, all of it, we're, you feel alive. And yes. you're like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. One hour, that was maybe one hour of work, of acting, out of the 12 hours waiting, and maybe you didn't shoot for two weeks. That's right. That's right. That's fun. nuts. Yes. And yet there we are going like a cat. There's more. When's the next, when's the next time we can work because for 20 minutes? Because it's such a high when we're working. It's like such an elevation. You, you're living, you're telling, you're recreating a present moment, whether it's like war or it's, it's sad or it's action. You're creating a, a moment that is supposed to be present and it has to be that intense. However, somebody writes it, you have to create that and, and that is, and in the theater, that's insane too. When you, you have to recreate a present for an hour or however is the play and you don't, you can stop. You have to keep it all the way. And it's, it's, um, it's contagious and it's quite, it's, it's an art. And, and I, I admire people that are good at it. And that are giving, they give everything because I understand what it takes. It's a, and I, but at the end of the day, I always feel like the Meryl Streep said, you get paid for waiting. The acting is free because that's our, that's where you can fly, right? That moment of like action. The play, you're just having fun at that point. You know, you just want to enjoy. Yeah. And it is, it's, yeah, crazy. It's, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> I recently watched like Josh Brolin uh, Instagram and he had, he had quite a little thing in his car that he, and then you quickly see comments, you know, and, and this happens a lot with act, actors. Like I know even David Diggs on Snowpiercer from Hamilton gave, he did the 45 thing and, and people quickly jump on actors like, shut up. You're just an actor. You're just, you know, I don't understand where that comes from. Why? you're not like first of all everyone has an opinion everyone can say whatever but mark ruflo actually said it best once on some years ago saying actually if there's anyone's opinion i would listen to and it's an actor in that the opportunities to travel we see so many people so many cultures so many countries we have to work with people we don't like necessarily that we don't agree with uh we research roles so much from research yeah cultures and and mentalities that when you think about it it's like an actor actually has more of an opinion because they are more um, not well-rounded but um what's the word i'm looking for i mean they just have I don't know, much more. We empathize. We've been exposed. We've exposed ourselves to so much. I, I, I don't know if the right word is uh, much well-rounded, but we were more curious about. Can't think of it. But it is like it's, it's you know, the, I just, I, I, I hate that. I hate when that sort of, yeah. you know, oh, don't, you know, shut, shut your actor mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? That's the stupidest thing I've ever fucking heard. It's like you can open that, <laughs> but an actor can't. So it just feeds into, you know, this idea of, yeah, 
to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I would, I would only always be supportive as my father was to me. I wouldn't be where I am if he hadn't said, go. I had an opportunity to go to Europe, go. I was like, well, I want to stay at home. I don't want to go. He's like, you'll have the rest of your life to work. And that's coming from a man who worked at a job for years he didn't like, but he provided for the family. Um, and so that's what you have to do sometimes is, is just, you know, support. And, and I think everyone should take a chance and take a risk and go for it, whatever, whatever that is. I'm sure he's proud of you. Great. It worked. It's a, good, it's a good feeling. I mean, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm uh, you know, half a century old going, you know, I'm, I'm not anywhere I want to be, really, like, <laughs> acting. Well, you know how life can change and turns, you know? That's another thing about this job is, like, your life can change overnight. That's part of the adrenaline rush. Like, any role that you portray can make you and, and, and make you to an extent that you have really not, there's no limit. And, and that's, that's another part of the, of the layer of this job, which is so strange. Like pe- doctors don't become crazy great doctors overnight with one operation. I mean, it could, but it just, it could happen with, with this job. And, and, and I, I honestly think that you're pretty amazing to be honest. I really do. Thank you. I mean, you can work in, you know, you know, we know how the business is. It it doesn't have to do with talent. Um, It's just, there's a lot of factors. It's some of the most talented people never get a break. You know, sometimes you go to a member in New York, you go to some off Broadway theater show and you're blown away by someone or, you know, I went to see bringing it back to Miss Julie. I remember like seeing a production of Miss Julie at uh, St. Anne's, and I think it was from South Africa. It was a South African production of Miss Julie. Wow. Powerful, red performance. You know, I don't see that actor <laughs> anywhere. You know, I, this job makes you so humble too. Like I went to London and I watched The Irishman directed by Sam Mendes, and it was such an amazing, amazing play and i've never seen these actors and uh, going back to the gratitude factor you just leave the theater feeling like i'm so grateful i have a job that i i get to pursue this i get to feed my family i i get to i, I have this job because it, it, the talent is that is exists in this universe with actors is pretty it's crazy. <laughs> so the fact that you have a job, but you got to experience so much, it's, it's pretty amazing. I'm very, uh, it, it humbles me all the time. It, it pushes more the gratitude factor and the, uh, and the, you know, the need to kind of be better. And because I, you, you know, there's like <laughs> so many people good at this. So many at uh, any age, women, men, it doesn't matter. It's just worldwide. It's crazy. So it's, uh, I think you're on your way. I, I think you've created beautiful things already. Well, thank you. Yeah. Steven, thank you so much for this great time. You are a legend. You're awesome. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time through this crazy. Thank you for not saying, for, for just going for it. <laughs> I really appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your heart and soul with me and, and your transparency. I'm just really blown away by it. I really appreciate you and your kindness and your, and your seeds, everything you put out there. It's really taken. I want you to know that not just by me, but by a lot of people. Uh, it's not for grace. It's, it's, it's not in vain, put it this way. And uh, I know I didn't have a chance to say hi to your dog, so say hi for me. <laughs> it's finding cool ground because yeah, it's I'm so sure. hot. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like I said, I don't know if we had started recording when we started this a few hours ago. But like I said, from the, the minute I met you, I just fell in love with your energy and who you are. And you, you, you just give light and, and, and radiance and, you know, again, what you do is appreciated and and that's why this was such a joy because like i said before i was like i don't feel so good i'm gonna cancel (laughs) but that's again part of the transparency of like 
yeah, I feel like shit. And it's not just acting. It's also just being real and just saying, yeah, yeah my nuts are hurting today. You know, I was kicked a bit, <laughs> but fuck, we'll just, we'll just go. And Roll then, with it. And then your light and your radiance and your energy and, and engaging with someone, you click and you walk away with feeling better in the perseverance. So it's, it's, it's thank you for reaching out to me and thank you for your kind words. And it's uh, I just, yeah, it'd be nice if it'd be in person, but one day. One day, soon, soon. <laughs> Big kisser to you. Please be safe. Stay out there safe, okay? And, and you know, next time if you go to that restaurant and they, they pay that meal for you, just text me. I'll be like, let me know who Johnny is because if I go to that restaurant, I want to sit down and say, hey, I know Stephen Dog. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking meal why did they get the the fucking one that was nice <laughs> well if i ever go there you let me know what restaurant is and i'll i want to see where St was johnny you know takes care yeah. of people <laughs> be safe out there sweetie right. thank Lots you for everything bye bye